Hello, we are the Ecotech team from Walnut Grove Secondary School, and we are happy to be here to talk to you about our solution regarding the problem in plastic pollution. My name is Matthew. I'll be introducing the problem at hand in our society and the solution that we have came up with to combat the problem. This is Annie. She'll be talking about the education process and how it connects to our solution. And then Rochelle will end off by connecting everything as a whole and explain how we're going to apply this into our society. So without further ado, let's get started. So after doing some research, we have found out that around 12 million tons of plastic is being polluted into our oceans every year. This is plastic that is destroying habitats within the marine wildlife and also killing around 1 million marine animals every year. So we can find that this is a really bad problem and we need to do something about it. So what we have decided to do was to create a solution regarding edible spoons or edible cutlery in general. So why did we choose edible spoons though? Well, after doing further research, we have found out that only 10% of plastic is being recycled every year, meaning that this is 10% of plastic that is being reused and recycled and just kept in circulation in this world, while others is just being littered and producing even further problems in, in their ecosystem. And with that, we decided that reusing and recycling policies are just not effective enough in our society. We need to find a way to eliminate the problem at its core to prevent any further problems from being produced and in the sense that we find that uh, edible uh, uh, plastic cutlery is pretty much everywhere in our world. You can find it in cafeterias, diners, restaurants. Since it's so abundant in our society, we believe that this is a good place to start in order to strive towards eliminating the problem of single-use plastic. With this, we have a certain vision with our product with the edible spoons. First of all, we want to make sure it's easily accessible. By keeping this solution, an open source solution, we are making sure that anybody and everybody can apply this solution into their own lives at any time. Second, we want to make sure it's 100% decomposable, meaning that it won't pollute the earth at all as much as the single-use plastic is. Third, we want to make sure it eliminates the need to use single-use plastic and utensils in general and effectively and immediately so that it won't cause any further problems by pushing it off to the side. Fourth, we want to use it as a means of education and inspiration towards actually strengthening our product and making it evolve into a more stable product as well. With this, we have found that other companies have done this solution before, such as Bake, Ease, and Eat the Dishes. However, what makes us different from these companies who have also made edible materials is that we are not centralized on capitalizing this solution. We want to make sure that everyone is well educated about the certain solution that's at hand and that anybody will want to put their time and investment into our product to make it even more stable and apply it more into our community. So if you look at the ingredients of our products, all of the products, products are uh, basically neutral and all organic. Even down to the flavoring, you can use black pepper and also garlic powder, even maple syrup. So this contributes the strength of our product. Not only it's easy to make, but it's also healthy and fun to make with family and friends. We have contacted an expert from Eat the Dishes, Marissa, and she had given us some expert advice to improve our recipe to create better quality of our spoon. So in order to reach the educational purpose of our solution, we have created storybooks for all ages that state the result of plastic pollution, our goals, and also our open sourced recipe of the edible spoon. Our team had taken one more step forward, as it was found out that 60% of the ocean plastic was contributed by five countries in Southeast Asia. This is a global issue, not, it doesn't only exist in North America. Therefore, with the help of our family and friends, we have translated it into 10 different languages, and that the language barrier doesn't stop them from being educated, getting inspired, and also trying out our product. As Anne stated, instead of having an overwhelming idea of coming up with one solution that solves the plastic pollution immediately, we need millions of people to do it imperfectly all together, and that includes every one of you guys. We want to spread our solution to as many people as possible. Therefore, we have posted our solution and storybook in the following social medias. We've also created a YouTube channel and website to show the um, edible spoon tutorial videos so that many people can have access to it. Okay guys, we 
we're going to talk about what we have done in our community. So there are a couple of parents from different country, and they just figured out, oh, we should try our the education book for their kids. So what amazing parents, I should say. The beauty of our product is not the spoon itself, it's the combination with the book. We should not live in a society that relies on single-use plastic. Instead, the book is going to reach out to the younger generation and they grow up with the knowledge and they're going to they know that single-use plastic needs to be eliminated. And you can assess the recipe to make your edible spoon yourself at home through our website. Kids love it. Not as if they're going to make like millions of them, they're going to make like tens of them. And they're going to forget about it, but the idea of the book is going to stay in their mind. So, in, uh, instead of like making an uh, edible spoon, so this, the book is going to help the children to like think of edible... Okay, so once they, when they see like plastic, when they use, they pick up a plastic utensil, plastic store, even a plastic, plastic cup, they will realize that they can actually make themselves and eat them. And with 10 languages in a row, it's not just restricted in North America, but it's like we are, educa we are educating the whole world. Can you imagine that? What a, what a, it's a global solution. It's global because it's multilingual. And then we need your help we need all of your help to towards this product. Without your help, we're not gonna, the idea is gonna sleep on our shoulder of these three high school students and will never make a big impact. My name is Rochelle, his name is Matthew, and her name is Annie. Thank you for considering us, and we hope you enjoy our product. Thank you. Um, it's kind of freaking me out that you're standing really close, so. <laughs> I've got boundary issues. Um, so uh, my name's Adrian from Plastic Oceans. We met quickly downstairs. Um, I, first off, I love it. Uh, I think it's amazing. And um, the fact that you're going more open source, already translated to 10 different languages, and put your, uh, your how-to videos. I can't wait to watch them. We'd love to have this all available on Plastic Oceans for other students. Uh, but um, why not having a little side, like I know you're not trying to monetize it, but potentially just to, because not, even though the DIY thing is great, but have you thought about maybe just like a small thing so when people are like, hey, we, we'd love, love this idea, we don't got time to make it, but um, can we get 100 or 1,000 because we've got an event, and that might be able to help provide a bit of funding so you can make some more videos and get, um, better quality uh, books and distribute those out to, to schools, right? Uh, the open source idea is great, but I just know a lot of people are extremely lazy by nature. Yeah, that's a really good question uh, about the DIY and how, uh, how we could f figure out a way to monetize it and provide it for those people who do not have the time. Um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, in that sense, we actually are planning on actually going at that point sometime in the future. However, since this is still an evolving process, that's why I want to keep it open source, is to get as many feedback as possible towards the solution and be able to fully flesh it out before we actually start monetizing it. Whereas others, uh, the experts we have talked to, they have been in this field for many, many years, whereas we have just started using this solution this year. We want to make sure that it's completely stable. We want to fix out all the little tweaks and bits and that will potentially damage the product and everything. We want to make sure it's just completely safe to use and everything as well. But yes, of course, we have this, we have thought about finding a point when we were going to actually sell it for uh, pre-made in order for others to be able to use it if they do not have the time to do it. And potentially even like a station where somebody could come and make it with some coaching from one of you or someone else later I think would be a really fun idea. Yeah, that would be awesome, yes, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm Alex, I'm a curator at Science World, um, and we would love to have you come and do a presentation there. Um, 
Mine is not so much a question so much as a suggestion that I got kind of excited about while you're presenting. Um, so you've already got um, all of the different languages for your books. You've already got two flavors for your different uh, spoons. Um, well, I guess I have two questions. Um, so one of them, do you think, based on the different prototypes that you've done, uh, kind of your formula right now, do you think there's the potential that it could be made into other shapes and products? That is actually a really good question about putting it into different shapes of products. Pretty sure Rochelle can actually answer that really well for you. That's a good question. So <coughs> we actually, we, we contact the Eat the Dishes, the lady, Marisa. We actually try to like communicate each other, like, because they are, he's, she's used, she's making like edible cups that can last for two hours. And I talk to her, I say, oh, I make like edible spoon. So can we actually like combine our ideas together and make a better solution? So what she told me is like, we need more time to like do more experiments so that we can actually have a better product to sell it to people. So we are still kind of working on it. So I actually make like, a, we actually make like plates and then um, we try to make chopsticks because chopsticks is like long so you can actually like just cut it out. Chopstick is workable, like it's, it's work, it works. But for fork and knife, we are trying, we, we still need to find, improve on it. Yeah, the chopstick one is a really kind of unique one that I haven't seen before. Um, yeah, then the second thing that I was just kind of excited about, so you've already got the whole, all the different languages. Um, there's the possibility you could like turn this into some kind of social media challenge for people to come up with their own flavors to, you know, wherever they're from to represent their own kind of culture or food. That, that's a really good uh, comment that you have here. Uh, I'm pretty sure Annie could testify that for you. So if you look at the last two pages of our book, we actually leave a blank space for people to come up with their own ideas. So they can be creative and like have a little changes to the environment. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see some new recipes. And um, actually, like there's in there's in one two company in India. They actually because they have a lot of millet. It's like a it's type of grain. So they're actually using millet to make the edible spoon. So we do make like maple syrup because it's represent Canada. So it's kind of like a cool and then we try it out and then it's actually working. Like you can eat it with ice cream. And so depends on the country. So we can actually discover more stuff in the future. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Catriona. I work with Force Cycling Tech Accelerator. With your book, is that available for download online? Or is that more so something that you'd like to have published in the future um, by a publishing house and somehow get a book deal? <laughs> That's another really good question, uh, especially since we have, the, we have had connections with uh, other sort of publications and everything like that in, in the past. Pretty sure Annie can answer that question for you as well as the education sort of person. Yep, um, again, that's a good question. We are trying to put it online, but before we put it online, we want to like check our book, especially the grammar. For like, we are we're going to check with native speakers, and we are trying to like figure out the errors in our book. And until it's completely done, we're gonna post it on our website and also our Instagram account and also other social media account. And I think it's a really good idea if we can publish, actually publish the book and ship it to different countries so that different kids can get educated by this book and getting inspired. We're hoping to have a co cooperation with um, the publishers. Thank you again. Uh, we are the WGSS Ecotech team. We appreciate your time here, Sven. Thank you.